This is JC on a bike, Journal Club on a bike. One of the coolest papers I've seen in recent memory. Good evening, Pittsburgh and Universe. This is JC on a bike. My name is JC and this is Journal Club on a bike. Rainy Friday night. Just want to give a quick shout out to a couple papers that just came out. One of the coolest papers I've seen in recent memory from the Lauren Frank Lab, where they show theta flickering of possible futures in the hippocampus. And the reason why I find this paper so cool is because a friend of mine in Norway named Karel Jezik did a paper called Theta Flickering Between Place Cell Maps in the Hippocampus. Theta Paste Flickering of Paste Cell Maps in the Hippocampus. And I found that paper to be one of the most extraordinary experimental paradigms I had seen in memory up until that point. What he did was he trained rats in one of two rooms. Each room had a unique lighting scheme Room A was lit from below and had a lighted floor, and room B had a black floor and black walls, but two walls had strips of light on them. And he trained these animals to become very familiar with these two rooms. And then what he did was he created a room with both lighting patterns available, but an electronic switch that would allow you to flick between them. So that essentially, as Carell described it, he would be able to teleport the animal from room A to room B with the flick of a switch. And this is a two-figure nature paper that demonstrates that these place maps flicker between place maps at a theta, theta paste cycle. And all the way back then, I was already claiming that Corell had found time in the brain and that this was the frame rate of the brain in the mouse or the rat and that changing this frame rate would change the perception of time for the animal. I said that already a long time ago but you know then Eichenbaum came along and did all his stupid papers with sequencing cells that he called time cells but I think anybody who's serious about finding time in the brain has always known that and has always known that he has been using the word time because it's sexy and not because that's what he found. Watch me go. See? Like this? You see it? Shit! The guy almost ran into me! Wow, that was amazing. So, Carl's, Carell's paper is extraordinary because of the, the brilliance of the experimental design. And it revealed something about how the hippocampus codes possibilities and places and hinted at the possibility that Lauren Frank's, Frank's lab has uncovered, which is that when the animal pauses at the T of a decision in a maze, that the hippocampus can actually flicker between the possibilities of left and right passage. And what's really cool about this paper is that the flickering occurs during locomotion and it's paced by theta. So the main conclusion of the end of the paper is that Future events are encoded in one half of theta, present events are coded in the first half of theta. And they flicker between present and future, and also flicker between two possible futures, hypothetical futures. And the flickering is really, really nice, and the way that they explain it in figure one is really, really nice, because unlike papers like Insertion or where they record from a shit ton of neurons, but they have no real hypothesis as to how they should fire to one another. So they have to use linear models and correlative uh, statistics only. 
This is a paper which presents several different possible hypotheses about how the coating in the hippocampus should fire if different regime or different coating regimes are used. And so they make predictions about the firing relationship between cells that should be visible if the hippocampus is encoding possible futures. And so they present the hypothesis in figure one, unlike a lot of papers nowadays that have no hypothesis to present. And what they present is very straightforward, that if there's flickering, then cells that encode one place or the other should be in different groups. And so then we should be able to see flickering between cells that encode that side or cells that encode this side, much like what Carell showed when he teleported the animal. And this is just plain brilliant. I'm sorry, but it's just brilliant because it's really just analysis. It's looking for it. It's knowing what to look for and looking for it. And so this paper goes into detail, giving you demonstrations of place cells representing either path and the flickering between them. Cool enough, there's also a paper that shows flickering between outcomes in the orbital frontal cortex. And that paper's from 2014, it's a little bit more... Shit. Here, dickhead. But I think the last author is Wallace. First author is Rich. And there, they're making the animal make a decision and the orbital frontal cortex flickers between cells that encode one odor and cells that encode the other odor. I'm not so familiar with that paper anymore. So I'm kind of mentioning that off the cuff. But I think these three papers go together really well because they represent sort of very independent observations of a similar phenomenon, which is the pacing of neuronal signaling, the synchrony of neuronal synchrony, and the pacing of neuronal synchrony, synchrony by the theta rhythm. And it's very, very easy to imagine a scenario where then theta rhythm is the coordinating rhythm of the brain. And we have a frame rate. Basically, the networks can only refresh each other so often, right? So 8 hertz, 10 hertz. It kind of makes sense because we can't see the 24 frame rate of a movie. So 24 frames per second is clearly fast enough to fool our visual system. I know I'm oversimplifying everything here, but let's think about this from the perspective of what it means for the brain, and I think that's why I'm pushing it this far. There is no other possibility for what it means for the brain other than theta is a way of pacing and coordinating anatomically unrelated signals, right? How do you know what's going on in the hippocampus when you're in the thalamus? Well, if we're all on the same rhythm, and we're all firing relative to the same rhythm, then there's something to be coordinated there. Interestingly enough, this paper also brings up a very important coding point that the flickering should skip cycles. And that was already observed a while ago with, uh, by John O'Keefe. Very classic papers already had examples of theta cycle skipping in place cells. And the argument was in those early papers that the cycle skipping occurred or the, the pacing occurred and the, and the relative movement through theta was occurring to 
suggest where they were relative to the place. Something like that. I can't remember those things. Right off the top of my head. But I do know they observed it. Thanks for joining me on my ride. That was three papers, really. The main one, the newest one, being a paper from Lauren Frank's lab where they show the sub-second oscillation between possible futures in the hippocampus. But I think this paper was really previewed by Carl Yezik's incredible work in the Moser lab um, where he showed theta paste flickering of place cell maps in the hippocampus when he teleported animals between two rooms. The teleporting uh, is something that you just need to see in that paper and to understand it fully, but it is spectacular. Um, and it really hinted at what was happening in the hippocampus. And of course, all the pre-play and replay and stuff that David Red or, uh, Reddish Lab has done and other labs have done, of course, have led to this um, idea that the animals are also thinking ahead. Um, we've seen pre-play before, so now the question is, and that is showing it now on a time scale of theta and constantly during locomotion. Um, the cool thing about this paper is also how they show that the flickering or the cycling changes before and after the decision is made, which also lends a lot of credence to the idea that it is involved in the decision making. Um, and then I also mentioned a paper by Rich and Wallace from 2014 that was actually an orbital frontal cortex and also showed theta paste flickering between representations of olfactory cues. So again, we're starting to see an emergence of a picture where these distributed networks are are being coordinated through a brain region, a brain rhythm, theta. If this turns out to be the case, it could be that theta is actually the sense of time in the brain. And so when we use psilocybin mushrooms and that kind of thing, it could be that the pacing of our theta changes and that's what changes our perception of time. So again, I think we can now throw out the Eichenbaum papers as being anything to do with time. I called out Eichenbaum in his lecture about the fact that this was just semantics and really we were looking at sequence. And I think this data from Lauren, how Lauren Frank's lab really definitively shows that if we're looking for time, it's probably a rhythm and it's probably not encoded by single cells. Those things that we saw in the Eichenbaum lab were surely sequence uh, keeping track of the length of time that they're running on that that treadmill that he installed in the in the circular mace. So wonderful result from Lauren Frank's lab. Read it now. It's in cell and it very much deserves to be. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a nice weekend.